Hi, my name is Kaelin Castillo. I'm an outbound product manager, uh, specifically focusing on our DevOps change velocity uh, application. In this short video, I am going to be discussing how to get to initial value with DevOps change velocity, uh, specifically in the form of change traceability. So what we're gonna be covering in this video uh, is first, I'm gonna quickly cover our DevOps change adoption journey. We have a whole nother video in this short video series that goes into great depth here, so I'm just gonna quickly cover this. And the second uh, core part of this video is gonna be demoing how to drive visibility and traceability of DevOps data within change requests and ServiceNow. Shown here is the adoption journey that I alluded to. What we're gonna be focusing on in this video is the second stage of this journey, change traceability. This is really the first step we believe customers are getting to initial value with DevOps change velocity. Once you've connected the relevant tools, your CICD tools in your tool chain, uh, at the second stage, we, this is actually where you're associating that data to relevant change requests to better help your change approvers be able to assess and confidently approve those changes. You can also leverage that data to uh, augment approval policies for automated approvals. And of course, if an issue does occur, this DevOps data will help better triage those issues more quickly, ultimately reducing MTTR. Let's jump into the demo. I'm logged in now as a DevOps manager, and I'm looking to create a new change request for a DevOps change that my team is looking to push to production. So let's go ahead and create that new change. So I'm gonna start by creating this change using our DevOps uh, change model. Uh, I, I will note that this will also work if you choose to make this with a normal change. The advantage of using the out-of-the-box DevOps change model though is that it reduces the number of change states that uh, will be um, using. It'll just focus on the ones that are relevant to a DevOps change. And also um, with this DevOps uh, change model, we can also have the DevOps specific approval policies applied uh, to it and that could accelerate the approval process when this change is being reviewed. The next thing that we need to do with, the, with this change is update the category to DevOps. What this does is it actually activates the business rule that will enable us to associate the DevOps data to this change request once we submit it. And I'm going to cut to populating the rest of the change uh, just to save some time in this video. So now that I've populated this change request and it's been submitted, we can now see that there's a button at the top right to add DevOps data to this change. Let's go ahead and click this button. In this modal, you'll see that there are a few data types that we can select from to uh, determine the data associations. There's artifact version, release version, and build number. In this case, I'll be using artifact version, and I'll go ahead and identify that artifact. It's 1.2644. From there, we can see all these different types of DevOps data that we can pull, and we can associate the relevant DevOps data to this change. In this case, I'm going to associate all data that's available. And click Submit. And once I submit that, we can see all of the uh, relevant DevOps data uh, in the related lists at the bottom of the change. And from this, we can tell what the change is looking to address. So it's fixing bugs in the cart system. We can see the code commits associated to that uh, work item. We can see the test summaries, uh, looking at the pass percentage, the number of pass tests. Uh, we can see the software uh, quality summary. We can see the security summaries. We can, we can see that artifact that I associated to it. Uh, and all of this data will help either the manual approver of this change to make a more informed decision, or it can also serve as inputs into an approval policy that could automate the approval of these types of changes. Also to reiterate, if an issue does occur because of this change, this data will also be very valuable in helping to triage and remediate any issue. To recap this video, uh, what we want you to take away is that getting to initial value of change traceability using DevOps change velocity isn't really all that difficult, and it also doesn't require process changes to your existing change process. With the DevOps data that you get with change traceability, you can improve the confidence in, in your approval decisions and also reduce MTTR if an issue does occur. And finally, you can achieve even more value at future stages of the maturity journey that we showed, and you can grow at your own pace with DevOps change velocity. For additional resources, uh, if you're looking for more, please go to our DevOps community page. We have a lot of great resources there. Uh, and of course, you can reference our product stocks as well. 
If you have any questions, please post your question to community and we'll be sure to answer it.